Angular mistake number four, stop avoiding using promises in your Angular applications. RxJS is great, but for many common everyday situations, promises are a better fit. Also, Angular has excellent support for promises. You are not forced to use observables, you have alternatives. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different examples where Angular provides great promise support. I'm going to compare a version of the code written in RxJS and the version written in promises so that you can compare and take your own conclusions. So without further ado, let's get started with this Angular Mistakes video. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. You might have heard recently that the Angular team has announced that RxJS sometime in the future is going to become optional. So we should expect to be using it less often in less places where it has been commonly used in the past. I think this is great to make the framework more friendly to beginners and reduce the learning curve and also it will help reduce the complexity of applications and making them easier to maintain over time. Now, it's uh, maybe a misconception or an impression that uh, many developers have that if you are using Angular, you are more or less expected to use observables everywhere. But the thing is, the Angular framework itself does not uh, expect you to necessarily use observables. You can also use promises if it's a good fit for a lot of your asynchronous code. A lot of asynchronous code such as HTTP code, it's a great fit for promises. Let me give you an example here of where Angular provides equal support to promises and observables. So this is a router resolver that you see here. It's written in functional style in case that you are not yet familiar with it. So we are using here the resolve function, which is the return type of this resolver. And then you just have to plug it here in your application routing in the following way, just like a normal class-based resolver. So nothing special. And you will notice that here I have written this resolver in a reactive style using RxJS, right? So we can see that we are returning here uh, some data, we are returning an object, and this object has two properties, beginner courses and advanced courses. And these observables here are being retrieved via the courses service, which provides us with an observable based API, meaning that here, the return of this call to load courses per category is going to be an observable. So fork join is going to wait for these two HTTP observables to complete. And then it's going to take the value emitted by those observables and emit that here to the router, which is then going to complete the router transition. All right. So as you can see here, the resolve function, if you notice its signature, and let me zoom this in a little bit. Well, I cannot edit it, but let me scroll through it. So you can see here the return type. The return type of the function is expected to be either an observable or a primitive type. If you have the value already available in memory, for example, you can retrieve it and return it as a primitive type or the resolve function also allows you to return a promise. So you are not forced to use observables to write things such as uh, router resolvers, router guards, etc. You have equal support for promises and you can choose between both in most cases. All right, so what would it take to rewrite this example here in promise-based code? Let's have a look at it. And then later on, I'm also going to rewrite a component using promise-based code so that you can see that it's not only on resolvers and on functional guards that you can easily use promises. You can use them everywhere in your code where they are a good fit for your asynchronous code. All right, so then let's go ahead and let's see what this resolver would look like if we would switch to promises. So here is the equivalent version in promise code. 
So as we can see, we are using here a try catch block, very easy to handle the errors. And then we are still injecting here the courses service and we are uh, using here first value from to convert this observable into a promise. We just await for the promise. We get the data and we return this here. Now, this uh, code is much easier to understand. We don't have the use of RxJS. We don't have the use of the fork join operator that can be a little bit tricky to use if you are not using, for example, short lived observables like uh, HTTP observables. So this code here uh, has this use of first value from. This is how we are converting an observable into a promise. But imagine that this service here, instead of returning an observable, would return directly a promise. Then our code would look something like this. So it would be uh, super easy to understand. It would be trivial, right? Let me just quickly change this implementation so that I fix these compilation errors. All right, so behind the scenes, I went ahead and I made this function here return a promise instead of an observable. So now we don't even have to convert one into the other. So the end result, it's this very simple, very easy to read and maintain code that looks synchronous, but notice here the presence of the async keyword. This is what allows us to use here the await syntax. So we just grab here these two objects from these uh, calls here to our backend. We return an object with the data that we need. We handle the error using a try catch block and that's it. It's as simple as that. There is no need to introduce a relatively advanced and much more complex notion of the fork join RxJS operator to doing this kind of things. Now, if you are still not convinced, let me give you a second example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some code that is written at the level of a component, the course component. The course component is written in reactive style. So you have here a data observable that contains the course data, which consists of the course and its lessons. And then if you check here the template, you're going to see that we are just subscribing to the data observable and then we access the data using data.course, etc. As simple as that. Now let's have a look at the rest of the component. If we scroll down, we are going to see that besides retrieving here a parameter from the router, we are on ng on init, loading the data. Loading the data consists of a little bit of RxJS code. So again, this is returning an observable. We assign it here to the course. This is returning another observable. And then we are using the combine latest RxJS operator to combine the two observables. And because combine latest only emits a value when the two observables emit their first value, we are bypassing that with the start with operator. So we are setting the initial value of the course to null and the initial value of the lessons to the empty array. Then we do a map here we map here the course uh, lessons into an object, etc. And if you want to further simplify this, we can even use here a different notation here for combined latest. Let's use the map notation here. So we have here a map with a course property and a lessons property. We need to provide to each property an observable. And then here we no longer need this map operator here. So let's just go ahead and let's refactor here the use of start with. So here start with the course is going to be null and then the lessons is going to be the empty array. All right, so you can also do this this way. The result is equivalent and the syntax looks a little bit nicer. And this approach, uh, writing this using these RxJS operators, etc., this works fine and it even has the advantage that it's compatible with on push change detection. But if that is not a criteria for you, then we can refactor this into promise based code in a much simpler and cleaner way. So then let's refactor this component into promise based code. 
So first of all, we no longer have observable member variables. We just have simple, plain uh, object types, a course and a lessons array. Then if we scroll down, we are going to see that our ng on init method uses here the async keyword. This allows us to use here the await syntax. So we just do a couple of calls here to our backend. Uh, now load course by ID and load all course lessons. I have refactored them so that they return promises instead of observables. So all we have to do is await for the resolution of these promises and we have the data that we need and that's it. It's as simple as that. Here in our course component, instead of having to use the async pipe, etc., we just access the data here using the course and lessons member variables. And that's it. As you can see, this new implementation of the course component that is based on promises is much easier to understand and to maintain. It's much less complex than its RxJS counterpart. You might be wondering if it's okay to use here the async keyword on ng on init. This is absolutely fine because the Angular framework will not use the return type here of this function. So adding here async automatically means that this method is going to be returning a promise, but the framework does not do anything with the return type. It does not wait for the promise to resolve before continuing the initialization of the application. So because we are sure that the Angular framework does not do anything with the return value of ng on init, we can safely use here the async keyword. Now notice the async await code. This almost reads like synchronous code. It's very convenient. It's very easy to maintain. And this is in general how asynchronous code is done in most frameworks outside of Angular. RxJS is not used. They use async await and it works just fine. So why not use it in Angular as well? This is perfectly supported by TypeScript and promises are well integrated in the framework. All right, guys, so I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Leave me a like if you would like to see other uh, videos on the series on Angular mistakes. Uh, go ahead and check out your code and see if there are parts of it that are maybe hard to maintain. Look what happens if you refactor from RxJS to Promises. I bet that things are going to start to look much easier. Notice that you still need RxJS in certain cases. So for example, if you have a long-lived stream of values in your application uh, that emits values over time that you want to distribute to multiple parts of your application, I think that that is an ideal uh, scenario for using an observable. So it's not like promises versus observables here. The two are great at different things. I think that in the Angular world, uh, promises are slightly underused, so I just wanted to uh, share with you the support that Angular has for promises and tell you that it's okay to use them. Feel free to use them as much as you want. You are not forced to use observables when in fact promises are probably a much better fit for very typical use cases. The best example is HTTP based code that is ideal for promises and for async await. All right, I hope that this video helped. Let me know in the comment section below what other content you would like to see here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers everyone!